How are you doing, church? We are back again observing the enhanced community quarantine in Metro Manila. This is our government's initiative and effort to control and arrest the spreading of the Delta variant. So this virus, according to medical experts, does not spare even the kids. So let's continue to abide with their rules because this is for our own safety and protection. And so I hope that you will continue to protect yourself and observe proper uh, health uh, guidance as well. So unfortunately, there are still many Christians all over the globe, no? including here in our country, who do not heed the advice of the medical experts to have themselves vaccinated. I have no problem kung ang dahilan ay dahil sa health issues, according to medical experts. Kaso, ang nakakagulat ay kinokonekta ng marami ang vaccine sa microchip, nanotechnology, mark of the beast at the end of uh, times prophecy na sila-sila na din ang nag interpret without the help of legitimate, prominent, and respected Bible scholars. Dahil dito, mas uh, naalarma mga tao. The people all over the world are facing too many uncertainties already as a result of this end-time hysteria that are spreading from different corners of the world. Yung maisip mo lang na malapit ng katapusan ay siguradong magbibigay na ng fear and anxiety sa marami. Ang sabi ng iba, Lord, wag muna kayong dumating kasi hindi pa ako nag-aasawa. Para namang i-reschedule ni Lord ang kanyang pagdating para lang sa wedding event mo, no? Ang iba naman, Lord, wag muna kayong dumating dahil hindi pa ako prepared. <laughs> Kaya nga matagal na sinabi more than 2,000 years ago sa Revelations 22:20 na surely I'm coming soon. Para anytime na dumating siya ay makapaganda ka. Pero alam nyo, whatever happens in our lives and in this world, I hope our confidence and hope still lies in Jesus Christ. And that we look forward to His second coming. Excited ka bang dumating si Jesus? May mga ibang tao na hindi nila nilulook forward ang pagdating ni Jesus kasi hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin sila naniniwalang uh, darating siya. No? Kasi hanggang, imagine, no? hanggang ngayon, uh, hindi pa rin siya dumarating. Ilan daang taon na ang nakalilipas pero he has not yet come. Hindi pa dumarating si Jesus ay para, na, para mas marami pang tumanggap sa Kanya bilang Panginoon na tagapagligtas at Diyos na kanilang buhay. At of course, sinasabi rin sa, first, oh, sa 2 Peter chapter 3, 9 to 10, allow me to read this passage here, no? 2 Peter 3, 9 to 10, The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will burn up and dissolve, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Now, it's true that Jesus is not slow to fulfill His promise, but wants all people to reach repentance. As for me, no, para sa akin, I'm looking forward to it with excitement. As Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, ito naman ang sinabi niya. So 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who love His appearing. Or in another version, eagerly waiting for Him to come again. My crown of righteousness din pala doon sa mga taong hindi lang nagsasabing willing to wait, no? but loving to see Jesus appearing. So, paano ka, I mean, paano ka naghihintay? May mga Christians na naghihintay kung kailan sila mararapture. Kasi ayaw nilang maranasan yung paghihirap sa mundong ito pag dumating na daw ang Antichrist. Wala namang problema kung yan ang paniniwala mo. Nagiging problema lang kapag nag, namamali ang ating katuruan that leads to a wrong interpretation about that particular end times view. Ang kailangan lang talaga ay fruitful ka pa rin habang naghihintay ka. You know what? This is also the concern of Paul in the Thessalonian church. He urged them to live according to the Word of God and to continually dwell in community and harmony with others, to persevere in spite of trials and to please God in everything. It is our hope and prayer that as we go through this five-week series in studying the book of Thessalonians, you will have a greater understanding of what being a follower of Christ means. In light of Christ's return, giving you hope, which in turn gives you purpose in present. This is why we title this series as Future Hope, because our present circumstances are seemingly bleak and may cause hopelessness and despair. Pero since nasa atin ang Panginoon Jesus at darating siya balang araw in all His glory, we live with hope for our future and have confidence in Him. I would like you to open your physical Bible and e-Bible to 1 Thessalonians 1 
1 to 10. Doon po natin babasahin ang ating main text. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. It says here, Paul, Silvanus, sa ibang mga version ay Silas, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that He has chosen you because our gospel came to you not only in word but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. And you become imitators of us and of the Lord. For you receive the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere. So that we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Let us pray. Panginoon, dalangin po namin ang iyong banal na Espiritu na siya pong mangusap sa amin sa araw na ito. Pagpalaan niyo po, Panginoon, ang mga taong nakikinig sa araw na ito sa kanilang mga tahanan. I believe, Lord, that you are going to bless them, bless their family, and we believe, Lord, that even as we listen to your word, we are already encouraged. Salamat po lang maraming Panginoon. But nubahin niyo po ang pagkakabasa po at pag-aaral ng inyong salita. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is probably the first letter of Paul, which can be read in Acts 17, verse 6. He is the author of this letter, while Silvanus, a Roman form for Silas, is probably his secretary or writer, yung anya anyuensis, no, na tinatawag, na parang sekretaryan dating. In one month's time, Paul, Silas, or Silvanus, and Timothy were able to form the first church in Thessalonica amongst the Jewish and Gentile believers. Kaso nung narinig ng maraming mga tao na si Paul daw ay nagtuturo ng defiance against kay Caesar, the Roman emperor, na ang totoong hari daw ay si Jesus, hindi siya, then nagkaroon po ng persecution no, sa kanila. Sabi sa Acts chapter 17, 6 uh, to 7, and uh, again, we will see no, uh, kung ano po yung naging reaction ng mga tao po roon. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities, shouting, This men who have turned the world upside down have come here also. And Jason has received them, and they are all acting against the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. Sumobrang tindi ang persecution na kailangan umalis si Paul no, sa siyudad ng Thessalonica. So ang ginawa ni Paul ay kumunekta pa rin siya sa mga mananampalataya doon para kumustahin lang sila. And after that, he received a good report from Timothy na they are growing naman despite the persecution. Paul reminded them that they are loved by God and they were personally chosen by God. Alam mo bang mahal ka ng Diyos at pinili ka ng Diyos? Kahit na hindi ka pansin ng mga tao, ay importante ka pa rin sa harapan ng Panginoon. The reason why the Jews and Gentiles and Thessalonians were saved is because when they heard the gospel, it came in power and in the Holy Spirit. After they were saved, matapos silang maligtas, they imitated the godliness of Paul, Silas, and Timothy despite the persecution na may kasamang joy no, sa banal na espiritu or joy in the Spirit. Dahil dito naging model sila sa iba't ibang Kristiyano sa iba't ibang lugar ng Macedonia and Achaia. Kumalat ang balita tungkol sa faith ng mga believers na ito. Sana ganyan din ang mangyari sa mga iba't ibang tao na makakita at makakarinig sa atin bilang Kristiyano. Imagine, mga dati silang mga idolaters. According sa 1 Thessalonians 1.9, sabi nga dito sa verse na ito, sa verse 9, For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And now, they are waiting for Jesus Christ to come. As 1 Thessalonians 1.10 no, states, sabi dito sa verse 10, And to wait for His Son, that's Jesus, from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Ikaw, naniniwala ka bang darating si Jesus? Kahit na umabot na ang ganito katagal na panahon? 
may kasabihan nga na, plan as if the Lord will come next year and live as if the Lord is coming at this very moment, ngayong araw na ito. So, what are the Thessalonian saints doing while waiting? Anong ginagawa nila habang sila naghihintay? Paul commended the Thessalonian saints by writing 1 Thessalonians 1, 2 to 3. Dito po sa verse na ito, sabi sa verse 2 to 3, We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers. Pinapanalangin sila ni Paul. Remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, what are the three virtues found in a believer's life as they hope for the future? Number one is that work produced by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Yun po yung una natin. Work produced by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. In this passage, you know, in verse uh, 2 uh, to 3, again, let me just um, uh, read this once more. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith. Sabi natin ulit, work of faith. No? Ulitin mo yan. The Thessalonian saints did their work for the Lord in faith. Martin Luther once said, sabi ni Martin Luther, We are saved by faith alone, but the faith that saves is never alone. Yung faith na yun, oo, naligtas tayo sa pamagitan ng biyaya ng Diyos sa pamagitan ng panampartaya natin sa Panginoon Jesus, pero hindi yun nag-iisa lang kasi upang, hindi, ano, kumbaga parang may mga, may mga fruit ang Holy Spirit na hindi po natin nakikita. But only the Lord sees that and knows that. But hindi po yun nag-iisa, yung panampalatayang iyon dahil sa alam natin na ang kaakibat nun o ang result nun ay yung pong uh, fruit ng Holy Spirit sa ating buhay. Now, again, we as believers continue to show forth the works in our life in the sense of doing good deeds. Ito po yung mga bagay na nakikita po ng mga tao. How does a believer show their good deeds in the eyes of men? Alam niyo, maniniwala lang ang mga tao sa atin kung meron tayong pagbabago sa ating buhay. Sabi nga ni James, no, sa James chapter 2, verse 17, So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Patayon, no? Kanino patay? Sa mga taong naka tingin sa'yo, sa mga taong nakakita sa'yo, patay yon. Pero sa Panginoon, o nga, maaring ang nakikita ng Panginoon sa atin o kaya ang uh, alam natin ay nagsistruggle tayo sa particular sin yon. Pero kaso nga lang, mahirap natin makumbinsi ang mga tao sa paligid natin kapag paulit-ulit natin nagagawa ang kasalanan yon. Totoo, na kapag, kapag halimbawang uh, hindi ito nakita ng asawa mo, ng mga anak mo, ng mga magulang mo, kamag-anak mo, katrabaho mo, o mga klase mo, o kaibigan mo ang yung pagbabago, ay hindi sila maniniwalang isa ka ng born again Christian. It is impossible to produce a genuine good work apart from the right kind of faith in Jesus Christ. Kailangan meron kang totoong panalampalataya sa Panginoong Jesus in order for you to be able to generate that kind of real good works. No? Dahil meron pong hindi tamang good works. Yun po yung hindi konektado sa faith natin sa Panginoon. Every work wrought apart from genuine faith in Christ is a kind of work that only comes from our flesh. Ang good works na ginagawa mo ay sinusuplayan ng power na nanggagaling sa faith mo kay Jesus. Ang nagpapatakbo ng power na ito ay ang Holy Spirit. And this is good work, no? And this good work will surely be seen by the people around you. It is not something that comes from you, but is a reflection from the Lord Himself. It is no wonder that thus Thessalonian believers, ito mong mga Thessalonian saints, no, see the transformation of Paul, of Silas, and Timothy that they easily imitate in their lives. Sabi nga sa 1 Thessalonians 1, 6-7, meron pong binanggit po rito sa verse 6-7, to and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. Kumbaga, ginagaya nila sina Paul, Silas, and Timothy kasi nga dahil sa sina Paul, Silas, and Timothy, eh, nakita rin nila ito no, sa Panginoon. And at the same time, I, I believe that it's because of the Holy Spirit's transformation in their lives. And so, it also uh, says here no, in this passage, for you receive the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. Yung good works na yan na nanggagaling sa faith mo will surely touch the lives of the people around you. Alam mo ba na diyan ako na born again? That was way back in 1986 na nahikita ko yung classmate ko na hindi siya naging manginginom, 
hindi siya naninigarilyo, hindi siya nagmumura, hindi siya nangongopya, hindi siya nagsisinungaling dahil sa born again siya. Hindi niya alam, no? Na, napapansin ko siya sa tuwing kasama namin siya sa barkadahan. Kami, umu-order kami naman kung ano-ano, uh, samantalang siya, ang in-order niya ay juice. No? Yun yung in-order niya. Pero hindi niya alam, yung mata ko, tinitingnan ko siya. I'm truly thankful to God na hindi siya nagpakita ng ikakastumble ko because once na nangyari yun, ay malamang matatagalan pa ako na tanggapin si Jesus sa buhay ko. Tandaan mo na kung totoong kristyano ka, ay malalaman mong lumalabas lang ang kabutihan sa buhay mo, dulot ng pananampalataya mo kay Jesus Christ. At sabi din ni Paul no, sa Bible na kilala ni Lord ang mga totoong anak niya kasi may galit sila sa kasalanan. Sabi sa 2 Timothy chapter 2.19 no, sa Good News Bible, But the solid foundation that God has laid cannot be shaken, and on it are written these words. Ano yun? The Lord knows those who are His, and those who say that they belong to the Lord must turn away from wrongdoing. Ang ibig sabihin yan, ng turn away, ay to depart from sin, to withdraw yourself away from sin, to shun, or to flee, or to revolt, or magprotesta against sa kasalanan. Yun na ibig sabihin nun, magprotesta no, sa kasalanan. Always be reminded to do good works produced by your faith in Jesus Christ as your eyes gazes towards the future hope. So, alalahan natin, tandaan natin, na work produced by faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Next is that labor produced by love in our Lord Jesus Christ. Labor produced by love in our Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, 2-3, it says here, again, in this passage, We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father. It says here, Your work of faith and labor of love. And labor of love. In fact, this is shown when the Thessalonians turned from idols to serve the living God. How do you serve your God in your life? Paano bang pinagsisiblihan ng Diyos mo sa iyong buhay? May isang illustration na binigay si William Barclay sa kanyang libro na nakuha niya kay Bernard Newman, kung saan nakatira siya dati no, sa isang Bulgarian peasant's house. Habang nakatira siya sa bahay ng peasant na ito, ay napansin niya ang dalagang anak nito no, na may sinusulsi siyang damit o yung uh, she was stitching a dress. Talong ni Newman do sa uh, dalaga, hindi ka ba napapagod sa katatahin ng damit na yan? Para bang kasi halos araw-araw nakikita niya itong babaeng ito na nagtatahi palagi. Siguro halos uh, panay, panay kapag halimbawang gumigising siya every time, no? nakikita niya palagi yung uh, babaeng yon, yun palaging kinukuha at tinatahi niya palagi. And then day in and day out, ganun palagi nakikita niya. Ang sagot ng dalaga sa kanya, uh, no, 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 hindi. You see, this is my wedding dress. Kung baga, kaya siya hindi na papagod at kaya siya tuloy-tuloy na uh, sa kanyang pagtatrabaho ay yung pala, yung pala yung wedding dress niya. So kumbaga para bang uh, excited siyang gawin yon Kasi alam niya na uh, sa kapag halimbawang natapos niya yun, ay uh, ikakasal siya pagkatapos nun. Kumbaga para bang mahal niya yung kanyang ginagawa. Tanungin niyo ang mga lalaki at babaeng ikakasal kung sila ay napapagod sa pag-aasikaso ng kanilang wedding. Malamang hindi. So why are they not tired? It's because they do it out of love for each other. Ang tawag yan ay labor of love. Sana sa lahat ng ginagawa nating kabutihan para kay Lord ay may kaakibat na pagmamahal palagi. Naalala niyo ba si Jacob nung nililigawan niya si Rachel? Despite his hardship, he still managed to finish everything because he is coming from a labor of love. Ang sabi nga dito sa book of Genesis chapter 29, verse 20, So Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Alam mo ba na parang umiikli at bumibili sa mga araw kapag hinahaluan mo ng pagmamahal ang mga ginagawa mo. Kaya ka lang naman naiinip sa trabaho mo kasi hindi mo hinahaluan ng pagmamahal o kaya excitement o kaya enjoyment. Kaya ka nahirapan na pagsilbihan ng asawa mo ay dahil hindi mo hinahaluan ng pagmamahal. Kaya ka nagiging legalistic sa ginagawa mo sa pagsunod mo kay Lord ay dahil hindi mo hinahaluan ng pagmamahal sa Kanya. Subukan mo lang samahan ng pagmamahal. I'm sure there will be joy in whatever you are doing for God and to anybody. Sabi nga ni Paul sa 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 15, and um, this is coming from the uh, NIV, no? Uh, dahil sa 
merong uh, binabanggit po dito sa verse na ito. This is coming from this passage. Let me just read it for a moment. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 15. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died and he died for all. That those who live should no longer live for themselves but for him who died for them and was raised again. Imagine, no? Kumbaga, his love for the Lord or yung love ng Panginoon sa kanya nagko-compel sa kanya para gawin ang mga bagay na yun. At yung pagmamahal rin niya sa Panginoon, I'm sure. By the way, no, ang mga labor na ito na kinoconsider ng Bible na good works ay may eternal bearing pagdating ng araw as we look forward to the future. Hindi lang ito parang gumagawa lang tayo ng kabutihan for, uh, for, for nothing. Merong bearing ito pagdating ng araw. Akala nyo ba na you know, ang mga ginagawa nating mabuti at yung mga ginagawang masama okay, ng mga krisyano ay walang wait no, pagdating ng araw. Oo nga, hindi na tayo condemn ng Panginoon sa huling araw or sa Judgment Day. Pero sa Judgment Day ay uunahin ni Lord ang kanyang mga anak in judging their works. Silang unang-unang huhusgahan pagdating ng araw. Sabi nga ni Peter sa 1 Peter chapter 4.17, For it is time for judgment to begin at the household, household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Kawawa naman yung mga taong yon, Kasi una-una, tayo ang unang-unang huhusga ng Panginoon. Again, not in the sense of to be condemned because we are no longer condemned, but it has a connection with rewards. At ano ang i-judge sa atin ng Diyos? Ang paliwanag ni Paul sa 2 Corinthians 5.10. This is uh, what Paul explained in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. So anong sabi diyan? Paul says, for we, refers to the believers, must all appear, saan? Before the judgment seat of Christ. Para ano? So that each one may receive. Ano naman yung matatanggap natin bilang mga Krisyano pagdating ng araw ng judgment? E yung what is due for what he has done in the body. Ano naman yung mga ginagawa natin bilang krisyano? Whether good or evil. Kasi may mga krisyano na gumagawa pa rin ng hindi tama sa harapan ng Panginoon. So, yun pala yun. Hindi pala totoo na hindi na mababanggit ang mga masamang nagawa natin bilang mga krisyano pagdating ng araw. Again, I'm not saying that these this evil things will be used to condemn us. Uulit, inuulit ko palagi. However, these good and bad deeds will be used as a gauge for rewarding God's people. Kung ayaw mo sumunod sa kalooban ng Panginoon, walang pipigil sa'yo kasi decision mo yan. Pero tandaan mo na aside from the possible discipline that God can give you, your future eternal reward is also at stake. After all, isa-isa naman talaga tayong haharap kay Lord pagdating ng araw. Hindi ka haharap kay Lord na katabi mo ang pamilya mo, o kaya kasama mo ang asawa mo, o kaya ang anak mo, o kaya yung church. Okay? Hindi naman tayo sabay-sabay na para bang tatawagin tayo as a church. But the Apostle Paul writes in Romans 14.12, sinasabi po rin sa verse na yun, So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. So that each of us will give an account of himself to God. Lahat po tayo isa-isa. So you just have no idea what God has in store for those who labor in serving Him with love. Kapag halimbawa po tayo ay nagsisilbi sa Panginoon na meron pong halong pagmamahal, hindi mo alam kung ano ang nakaprepare para sa iyo. Kapag halimbawang dumating na po ang time na humarap tayo sa Panginoon. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 9-10, to 10, no? sabi niya dito, However, as it is written, No eye has seen, walang matang nakakita, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. In verse 10, it says, But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. So in other words, any physical eyes, any physical ears, and any physical brain that thinks has no idea what God has in store for those who serve the Lord with love. Tanong ko po sa inyo ngayon, aking mga kapatid, may pagmamahal ba na kasama kapag pinagsisilbihan mo si Lord? May pagmamahal bang kasama kapag sinusunod mo siya sa iyong buhay? May pagmamahal bang kasama kapag nagbabasa ka ng Biblia at nananalangin ka sa Kanya? 
may pagmamahal bang kasama kapag ikaw ay nagdi-disciple na o kaya nag-reach out sa mga ibang mga tao? I hope so. Sana nga, meron palagi. I really hope so. Umiikli ang mga araw kapag pinagsisilbihan natin si Lord ng may pagmamahal sa Kanya. Sabi nga ng scripture, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. At sabi rin ni Lord kay Peter, naalala mo ba yung sinabi ni Lord kay Peter noon sa John 21.15, and it says here no, in this particular passage, When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Do you love me more than this? Siguro, ito yung time na nag- bumalik sila uli sa panghingisda. So most probably, baka sinasabi ng Lord, do you love me more than the things that you are doing? Ikaw, mas mahal mo ba si Jesus kumpara dyan sa taong yan na hindi mananampalataya? Mas mahal mo ba si Jesus kumpara dyan sa trabaho mong hindi nakakalugod sa Kanya? Mas mahal mo ba si Jesus kumpara dyan sa mga bawal na gamot, sigarilyo at alak na pumapatay sa iyong katawan? Mas mahal mo ba si Jesus kumpara sa maling relasyon mo sa taong yan? Kapag nanggagaling ka sa pagmamahal mo kay Lord, ang gaan-gaan ng mga bagay at ang dali niyang sundin. Remember, our labor must be produced by our love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Dapat ay merong halong pagmamahal palagi. Yun po ang dapat na ginagawa po natin. And thirdly is that steadfastness produced by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Steadfastness produced by our hope in Jesus Christ. It says here in 1 Thessalonians chapter, again, 1, 2 to 3, ulitin ko ulit, We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith, and labor of love, and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. To be steadfast is to be unwavering. The Thessalonian believers are called to be steadfast in their hope in Jesus Christ, despite the persecution that is happening in their midst. Sige lang, kahit na pinapatay na sila, pinipersecute sila, tuloy-tuloy pa rin. Kahit na pinapahirapan sila sa kanilang pananampalataya, basta hahawak pa rin sila sa pag-asang ibinigay sa kanila ni Jesus. Walang balikan sa dating buhay. Sana kayo rin, no? Wag nang, wala nang balikan sa dating buhay. Kung baga, wag na tayong bumalik sa dating natin ginagawa. When the Thessalonian believers started serving the Lord, there was no turning back. Be continually hopeful. Huwag kang bibigay dahil may pag-asa pa sa mundong ito. Hindi pa huli ang lahat. May buhay ka pa. Humihinga ka pa. Tingnan mo ngayon sa mo kung humihinga ka pa. Humihinga ka pa, ibig sabihin, May pag-asa pa. Nandiyan ang Panginoong Diyos na pwede mong kapitan at tawagan. Nandiyan si Jesus na naghihintay lamang sa iyo upang tawagan mo siya. Sabi nga ni Paul sa Romans 8, 24 to 25 sa uh, Good News Bible. Ito po yung kanyang binanggit rito. For it was by hope that we were saved. But if we see what we hope for, then it is not really hope. For who of us hopes for something we see? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Usually, ang pag-asa ay normally hindi nakikita. Kaya nga ang pag-asa ay nahaluan o nilalaki pa ng pananampalataya. Continue to hold on by embracing that hope even though you can see it right now. Hindi natin nakikita si Jesus. Hindi natin siya nakikita personally sa, na nabuhay sa mga patay. Pero ito ang sinasabi ng kanyang salita. Therefore, we will trust Him. Ito yung sinasabi ng silita ng Panginoon. May authority po ang silita ng Panginoon. Ito po yung ating binanampalatayanan. Kung kaya meron po tayong pag-asa. And we will not waver in our hope. Whatever happens, kahit na hindi natin nakikita si Jesus ngayon, alam pa rin natin siya ay darating. Ikaw, may pag-asa ka pa rin ba? Especially sa inyong marriage? Meron pa. Magkakapalikan pa pa kayo ng mister mo? Umasa ka sa Panginoon. May pag-asa ka pa rin ba na makahanap ng trabaho ngayong pandemic? Meron. May pag-asa ka pa rin ba na magkaroon kayo ng magandang business? Of course. May pag-asa ka pa rin ba na magkakababy kayo ng misis mo? Siyempre naman. May pag-asa ka pa rin ba na magkabahay at magkaroon ng sasakyan ngayong taong ito? Of course. May pag-asa ka pa rin ba 
nagagaling ka sa yung sakit. Walang kaduda-duda. Kailangan lang talaga ilagak po natin ang ating pag-asa sa Panginoon, ang ating pananampalataya sa Panginoon. Dahil after all, siya yung darating na Diyos. Please do not waver. Be steadfast. As James 5, 7 to 8 says, sabi po niya rito sa 5, 7 to 8, Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and late rains. You also, be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Tayo po ay manalangin. Panginoon, salamat sapagkat naniniwala po kami na kayo po ang Diyos na tapat sa amin. Naniniwala po kami, we believe, na kahit hindi po namin kayo nakikita, Lord, physically, we believe that you are true to your word, you will fulfill your word, you are faithful to fulfill the promise in your word. Lord, it is my prayer, Lord, for those who are listening, Lord God, to this message right now, that they will always, Lord, work or labor at the same time with love. That they will also even produce good works as a result of their faith in you. Na makita po ito, Panginoon, ng mga tao sa paligid po nila. At maniwala sila na sila ay krisyano. At eventually, ang mga taong ito na nakatingin po sa kanila ay magkaroon po ng personal na relasyon sa Panginoon. Dalain ko rin po, Lord, na sa pagsisilbi nila, Panginoon, sa inyo, ay samahan po nila ito palagi ng pagmamahal. Lord, wag niyo pong hayaan na sila po ay mapagod sa kanilang ginagawa. Wag niyo pong hayaan, Lord, na sila po ay parang naiinip o kaya ginagawa nila mga bagay na ito dahil masyadong parang nagiging legalistic na po sila. Lord, far be it that that will happen. But it is my prayer, Lord, that whenever God, they, they do things for you, they read the scripture, they disciple people, they evangelize, Lord God, the lost people, whatever that is that they are doing, even in the ministry, I pray that they will always inject love in it. Because after all, kayo naman talagang pinagsisilbihan namin, Panginoon. We don't serve people, but we actually serve you through these people. And I pray, Lord, also that you will give them, Lord, that kind of hope, steadfast hope. Yung unwavering na hope na yan ay hindi po papalya at hindi titigil. Dahil alam namin na ang Diyos po namin ay Diyos na buhay. And I pray, Lord, that you will strengthen, Lord God, your people right now. Continue to strengthen them, Lord. Every day, every month, whatever happens, Lord God, even this pandemic, our hope, Lord God, will be unwavering and our faith will still continue on. Lord, I even uh, ask, Lord, for those who are listening to this message, if they have not yet given their lives to you, open their hearts. If you want to receive Jesus Christ in your life right now, and if you want to surrender your life to Him, gusto mo magkaroon ng bagong buhay, gusto mo magkaroon ng eternal life, nais mo tanggapin si Jesus sa buhay mo, sundan mo ang panalangin ito. Follow me in this prayer. And just say this with all sincerity in heart. Sabi mo, Lord Jesus, yeah, that's it. Sabi mo, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I believe that you died on the cross and that you rose from the grave. Today, I open my heart and I give you my life. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank you so much for the eternal life that you have given me. Holy Spirit, move in my life. Transform me change me, give me hope and a brand new future. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you followed me in that prayer, I would like you to connect with us and just uh, connect with uh, the believers in this church and uh, we hope to stand with you 
and at the same time believe with you, especially in, in faith, that you will grow in your faith in the Lord. Now let me just end this in a prayer. Lord, I pray that you'll bless your people, bless their family, bless the works of their hand. Lord, protect them from any Delta variants. I pray and I ask God that you will also, Lord, continue to prosper them despite the fact, Lord, that there is a, there is a lockdown right now or an ECQ right now. Your provision will still be there, Lord God, sa bawat pamilyang ito. Salamat po, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and grace and faithfulness. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.